the words of Jesus. This is, a, this is amazing stuff here because we're, we're going to go through some of John here. And uh, uh, if you look at John starting around John 3.16, if you look at John all the way through, a lot of there's red letters like chock a block. Anybody know what the red letters mean? We should. What is it? Words, it's words of Jesus, right? That's why Jesus is in red there, just so you guys didn't catch that, okay? So uh, John's amazing because of how much of Jesus' words there are inside of it, and we're going to explore a lot of that today, all right? Uh, what we're going to really talk about today in John 17 is glory. This is a, a word that we all know, and it's all throughout the Bible. It's something that we all use in our lives on a daily basis is glory and where we place that glory all right uh, before we get into our our scripture I want to do some this little exercise and it goes against all Baptist belief all right so just hold with me okay um, and you'll see why it goes against Baptist belief but I want to do an exercise with you this morning before we start and if you have a wedding ring on ra raise your hand I got a wedding ring on all right. If you have a wedding ring on, I'm not going to ask for it. I'm not going to do like a magic trick and ask for your wedding ring and then it disappears. And We're not going to do that. But what I want you to do is take your wedding ring off of your finger. Just stick with me. Do it. This would be great. And put it on your other finger. Okay? Put it on your other. It'll, if it'll fit. Some of you might, might not fit. Some of you might need some butter to get it off. Right? Uh, I, I'll be honest. I, this is a different wedding ring than I was wearing yesterday um, because I, I got in town yesterday. Me and Lacey ran off to a staycation, and I just randomly tried to, I don't know why, just pull that ring off, and it wouldn't come off. <laughs> so uh, I think I need to get, hit the treadmill a little more. Um, but So I, if yours doesn't come out, that's okay. I feel you. I was in that situation yesterday, uh, but now I've got a different one. It's working. So put your ring on the other, other hand, okay? Now, if you have a, a watch on... Raise your hand. Can I watch? Some people are like, I'm just not going to raise my hand. That's okay. That's very Baptist of you. That's okay. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so take that watch and put it on your other wrist. Just see how that feels. See, how it, take your watch off and put it on the other wrist. There, there's a good reason that I'm doing this, okay? So stick with me. It's weird. Like, I, I don't know that I could even put my watch on. Like my hand wouldn't... Lacey, are you having trouble? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Anybody else think it's weird? Yeah, it's weird. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go even further. Take your shoes off. No, I'm just... I'm, I'm, you know. <laughs> we could do that and, and take your socks and switch feet. Well, that would be weird, right? Uh, it would make you wonder if one foot's sweater than the other. I don't know. We're not going to do that, okay? But the last part of this that I want to do, and this is the the heresy against Baptist church right here. I want you, if, if, you're, uh, if you're sitting as a couple or as a family, or to get up and, and just switch seats real quick. Just switch. <laughs> Norma's like, uh-uh, I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. <laughs> Lacey, move one chair over. If you're by yourself, just move one seat over. And, and listen, <laughs> this, this is great. Art's like, I, I moved a half a seat over. Were you sitting in the crack art? Yeah. <laughs> All right, li listen, this is great because what we're doing here is we're, we're getting out of our comfort zone, right? We're getting out of our comfort zone. And as bad this, we have a really bad habit of saying, that's my chair. <laughs> and it's, it's sacred, right? That's my chair. And uh, we have a, man, we have a bad habit of that. It's comfortable. It's where we've sat all along. It's where we're used to going. The parking spot, same way. Uh, the church that me and Lacey served at previously, there was a parking spot next to the, the back door. And uh, our other associate pastor parked there. And he was not young, okay, granted. And there was another lady in the church uh, who was not young either. And they were in a fight over this parking spot. It, I, and, I, and he was one of the pastors. Uh, and so bad that she paid um, somebody to uh, stencil her name <laughs> on the parking spot. And he went and painted over it and put his name on the parking spot. Right? 
So I, I'm just trying to get you out of your comfort zone this morning because we, we tend to come and serve in God's house. It, it becomes repetitive the same way. Every week. We sit in the same chair because I'm comfortable here. I, I have the songs that I know that I stand up and praise to, and, and if Ricky uh, intros a, a new song, I, 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 probably, I might not because I don't know that song. And, and same thing for young people with praise. If I hear an old song, I don't know. I'm, I'm not doing that one. But the latest Christian song that's on the radio, I'll praise to. Get out of your comfort zone this morning and listen to God's word in a different place, with a different mind, with a different heart. Listen to God's word with the intention to get something different, to leave here changed, not the same as when you came here. That's the purpose of God's word is to move us to change. If we can't start there this morning, then we're not going to finish there with you walking out changed. That's the purpose. I don't know about you, but I come to church to be filled. I come, I'm sorry. I have a selfish need for coming to church. I come to church because I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to hear God's word, and I want to see it change my life and have it affect me and change my heart and make me realize that I, I, I'm, I'm not a very good person, but Jesus Christ is. Amen? Amen. I don't know how you came to church this morning, but I, I, I employ you to open your heart to this word because what we're going to read today in John is powerful, very powerful, life-changing, powerful. And if you're today, if you're in here and you're lost in any way, I don't know how to get rid of this pain or this hurt I don't know how to, to decipher the mystery of God's word. I, I don't even know who Jesus Christ is. Whatever scenario you're in this morning, listen up. Get uncomfortable in here and open your heart to God's word. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right. Okay, we're going to start, now that we've done our little, I'm going to put my ring back because it just feels like I'm cheating on Lacey. I don't know. I don't know why, but it's, love you, babe. Okay. And if you have your ring or watch on the other, you can put it back. If you put your, took your socks off, put them back on. We don't want to smell feet in here. Um, okay. So we're going to start with giving glory. And I got two pictures I want to show you. Uh, you guys go to, go to the first picture. At the beginning of this game, I'm standing here. We're, we're about to, um, the game's about to start. We're standing here, me and Tejani. We've got our equipment, our production equipment. And this is our, our seat. And all of these football players come to the goal line and they see what they're doing what are they doing they're praying yeah yeah and I, I'm standing there just oblivious to life waiting on the football game to start and all these guys come and run and kneel down and it wasn't just one or a couple or the few you see there it was the whole team both sides they all came and knelt down and prayed and that, that just it moved me right as it should and I, I sent this picture to, to Brady. And I, I'm using this picture this morning because they're at the goal line bringing glory to God. Right? This is a Big 12 championship. I know it's not the, the um, college championship game, but it's still, it's a big game. At, at AT&T Stadium, Jerry World, got the big jumbotron up there. It's a big game. Where people are coming to bring them glory, these football players, and say, you're, you're the best of the nation or one of the best in the nation. But they're instead giving their glory to God. I think that's amazing. It's great. All right? It, yes, amen is right. We went from um, seeing people kneel during the national anthem to now we're seeing them kneel to the Father. Amen? Isn't that awesome? That's great. Yeah. Right? And, and I, I, I want to use this picture because I want to get you in a place of thinking about where your glory, where, where do you put your glory at? Where do you put, and obviously it's not the Cowboys, right because they didn't really do anything last year sorry but we could put it in who who won last year chiefs okay i'm surprised you're not wearing a chief shirt so let's go to the next picture and we got this right these this is the winner of the super bowl this year Mahomes, right i like Mahomes. who likes Mahomes? even if you're a cowboys fan you can like Mahomes. come on you might not next year if we're in the playoffs against him, but I like Mahomes, and he has become public, not just for winning a Super Bowl, but he's become public for giving glory to God, 
Yes, he's openly out there about giving glory to God. And then at the very, very end of the game, they get to the end zone. And I, I love this play because Mahomes throws just a short little dinger into the end zone. Guy that's open right there. But it was like he could have done it at any time. It, I was watching and I was like, man, just bloop, game's over. Longest OT of a Super Bowl history, right? Am I right? Yeah. And he dinks it and wins the game. Like he could have at any time. I like that comparison because we're going to talk about Jesus. We're going to talk about time and the hour and these things. And Mahomes, if you watch him, he's, he's very in tune with his team. And that last set of plays that he does, and it's just like perfect after perfect after perfect and a little dink and it's done. And again, but it was like at his time of choosing almost. I remember hearing a, a radio uh, personality say that. It was like almost like Mahomes drug it out so he could get more glory because he was that in tune with his team and everything, right? Uh, well, I want to use Mahomes and the UT and, and football, for that matter, professional football, because we, we put so much glory and, and uh, um, emphasis into that where we're at. Everybody loves football in Texas. Everybody's got a jersey. It's something big for us. Now, I have to admit, I don't have a jersey, and I'm not a big football fan, um, but I work around it enough that I, I pick up enough on stuff, right? Um, but I want to use UT and Mahomes, and I want you guys to think about, as we read through the scripture, where is the glory in my life, and where, where am I giving it to, right? So um, let's get started here in chapter 17, verse 1. We see Jesus says, I'm sorry, we see John says it first. When Jesus had spoke these words, when Jesus had spoke these words, what words did he speak? Now, um, to rightly look at the scripture in 17, I, I want to just back up real quick to chapter 16 in the end because I want you to see what words we're talking about here, right? Uh, in verse 31 of chapter 16, Jesus says, Do you now believe... Behold, the hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. Here's the crux of it, all right? Listen to this. Listen to this. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. That's the message that we're going to look at today. Is this what Jesus says here? Take heart, I have overcome the world. We're going to unpack everything in, in 17 verses 1 through 5. But they're all going to be based on what he said here. Take heart, I have overcome the world today. And like I said before, I come to church to be filled. To receive good news. To be encouraged. And this morning, I want to tell you, I'm bringing you a message from Jesus that says, take heart, I have overcome the world. I don't know where you're at right now, what kind of pain and hurt and sin you're dealing with in your life, but I'm here to tell you this morning that Jesus Christ says, take heart, I have overcome the world. Amen? Amen. I, I, I don't know how bad a sickness is in your life. I don't know if you just lost your job or your house, or like I said earlier, maybe you've never even found Jesus Christ ever. I don't know what problems you're going through, but I do know I'm going through problems, and I got pain, and we all do. And when I read these words, it gives me hope. Take heart. I have overcome the world. Amen? Jesus says this at the end of a discourse with the disciples where he's going chapter through chapter. We see the, the discourse on the good shepherd and we see the discourse on uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We see a discourse on, uh, on, on the, the vine, the true vine. And through all this, Jesus is teaching the disciples and, and they're fuzzy on the words he's using because Jesus is tricky, right? And when he says... Right here, he lifted up his eyes to heaven in chapter 17. It's to mark a, 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 a change. It's to mark that he's moving from a discourse with the disciples, and now he's moving to a prayer with the Father. All right? This is a change. It says, he lifted up his eyes and said, Father, the hour has come. 
This, this term, the hour has come, is really interesting. In, uh, in the Bible, Jesus talks about the hour has come over nine times. Three of those nine are in the statement, the hour has not yet come. You guys remember the, the wedding with his mother and uh, Jesus' first miracle? What did he do? Change water into bourbon? No, wine. Uh, and his mother goes, tells him, hey, work a miracle. And what does he say to her? <laughs> he starts it off by um, kids that are in here, teenagers in here. If you talk to your mom this way, you might get backhanded. But he starts it off by saying, woman, my hour has not yet come, right? And I always thought that statement was funny because I read into it my own presuppositions in watching some teenager talk to his mom badly. And I could just see my dad's hand coming quickly across the car seat. You guys remember that, right? Your dad could reach you at any point in the car. You know that, right? Even me with my short arms could reach my boys. with. <laughs> I could take a shoe and, and chunk it. Um, but I always thought it was funny when Jesus says that, yeah, right? Woman. So this hour thing, let's look at it. What is he talking about here when he says, Father, the hour has come. And it's interesting that he uses time. Uh, in, uh, in 3D, we use that term 3D or 4D. Uh, I, I work in drafting all the time. I have to draft drawings and engineer them. And so I work in 3D um, drawings all the time. What is that made up of? You have an X and a Y axis, so up, sideways, and then you, the third axis is what, John? Z, right? Z is height, right? So X, Y, and Z is 3D. Now, if we were to look at 4D, four dimensions, what's the fourth dimension? Anybody? Time. Time is the fourth dimension. Uh, and let me just tell you, um, time is something that man created. How do I know this? You might ask. Uh, now, if you have your watch on the wrong side, have you written? No, I'm just playing. Uh, I know this because God does not exist in time. Time does not exist to God. God can move in and out of time. It is not linear to him. And we see those, those words in, in, written in here where Jesus talks about before and after. And uh, we see past and present kind of language and everything. But what you need to realize is that time, time doesn't exist for God, Jesus Christ. And he can move in and out. It's not linear to him like it is to us. Okay? So when he says the hour has come, well, easily and obviously he's talking about the passion. Because we're about to move into Christ. Um, growing near to the cross. And that's what he's training the disciples and he's teaching them and he's saying, here's these words because I'm about to leave. So obviously when he says the hour has come, the passion is coming. And that's very appropriate for the time of season that we're in right now, right? Easter is just a month away or less than. So Christ is talking about the passion, but he's not just talking about that. Remember, he, he's not linear in time. Christ is also talking about the formation of something. And, and I want to move forward in this scripture real quick, and we'll come back to that, okay? He says, The hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. Now, glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. Well, if, if Jesus is saying, Let the hour come now, he's, he's asking the Father, God, um, make it quicker. Bring it on. Let's do this. Uh, very much how I approach situations. If you ask Lacey, I usually have no fear. I will try to jump a tractor across a creek. I, done it, right? But I didn't actually jump the tractor across a creek. I got stuck. Okay. But I do things like that, and there's like no fear. It doesn't exist, and I just go, yeah, let's go. And, and Jesus is approaching the cross like this, which is awesome. He's going, uh, let's, let's hurry it up. But when he says, let's glorify the Father, and glorify me, this reciprocal glory he's talking about, you wonder, like, how, how is you getting beaten and, and blood and dead and all this stuff glorifying? And, and I, I, I want to back up into chapter 16 real quick and show you, because Jesus just dealt with the disciples on this whole not having fear in a situation of pain or anxiety, not having angst, 
okay? And Jesus explains in, um, let's say, 16... 21. 16:21. He's going to talk about being uh, pregnant here, okay? He says, "When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come, but when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also, you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you." And he he's saying here, he's he's akinning his going to the cross as a, as a birth scenario. That um, all, all women who have children here, you know very well, in that moment, um, I don't know because I have passed kidney stones, but I don't know because I never had a baby, but I know that in that moment when my boys were born, she was, I think she'd have killed me if, if she could have got her hands around my throat. It's painful, right? Amen. It's, it's very painful until you get the, uh, the drugs in your back and then everything's good from there, right? But through that pain, why, why endure that? Why go through that? Because it's the, the beginning of life. It's pushing life out into the world. So you say the pain is worth the product. Some people, some parents of teenagers today are going, the pain was not worth the product, let me tell you. Uh, amen? Amen. <laughs> Some people with older kids are saying the pain was not worth the product. (laughs) But for the most part, the pain is worth the life that is coming out of you. And Jesus is using this example because he's telling them something that they don't understand. The disciples think he's he's going to go to the cross and he's going to be no more. And that's it. But Jesus is saying through this cross, through this sacrifice, this pain and this misery, there is going to be life abundantly. And so when we say, uh, we look at the scripture and it says uh, the hour that Jesus is talking about in 17, he's not just talking about the hour of the cross and the crucifixion. He's also talking about the hour of the formation of the church, the beginning of the body of Christ. And I, and I want you to know today, I want to mark this today. If you've got your Bibles, write this in your Bible, that the church, was, it was not formed at the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. Not. It was formed at the cross because at the cross gives God Jesus Christ all the glory all the glory Christ's sacrifice of his perfect body and perfect being was the beginning of the church that's important because if you put it at the day of Pentecost there's a chance that you can move some of that glory to man and all the glory needs to be put on Jesus Christ and I, I want you to know today what he's saying here is that the time is coming for him to go to the cross, but he's joyous about it because he knows that there will be resurrection. There will be joy in the morning, that the cross is not the end. The pain and the blood and the anguish, it's not the end, but it's the beginning. It's the beginning of the body. There's a, there's a video um, that... I've shown before in, in sermons in the past, uh, and some of you may have seen this video. It's really great, strong video. It's a video of this girl in a, in a race. It's like the national championship race, and she starts to run, and it's like a, I think it's like an 800-meter or a mile, mile race, and uh, she's winning. By leaps and bounds, she's winning, and all of a sudden, she catches a toe, and bam, right on her face. And the video is great because the, the narration on it says, this video is not about the fall. And all of a sudden, you see her pop up. And she starts running. And she's catching up. She catches up to last place, and she passes him. And you see her. She's digging in, digging in hard. And all of a sudden, at the very end, she comes out first. And the narration goes, this video is about the rise, not the fall. If, if we're going to talk about glory this morning, that's how we need to look at it. It's not, a, it's not about the fall, but it's about what comes out of that. The life, the resurrection, the hope, the glory. What comes out of it is, is Christ's words here in 16 where he says what? Take heart, for I have overcome the world. And I, I want to shift your minds from the glory that we give uh, with football and Patrick Mahomes and UT and um, 
A&M and I want you to, to shift from that because here's the deal. Whether you like it or not or whether you know it or not, that glory that's given to these football players, these people that we hold in high esteem, it's paid for. You bought a shirt, you bought a cable package, you bought a ticket to Jerry World and spent way too much on parking than you did on the ticket to go to Jerry World and a hot dog. But it's paid for. They're paid to do that. Where our glory really should be going, Jesus Christ, he did it for free. For free access. For free access for all of us to have salvation. His sacrifice wasn't free, but what he's offering is free today. That anybody can have access to it. That anybody can lay down today and say, I would like to give all the glory to God, to Jesus Christ. That anybody could say that, yeah, I, I am going through hurt and pain this morning. That yes, I, 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 I don't know how I'm going to get through tomorrow. But we can rely on the words that Jesus ends chapter 16 with. Take heart, I have overcome the world. This morning, you came to this house of God for a reason. And I hope it's to be filled or to get something or to be moved to be changed. You came for a reason. And it's not, we don't really have donuts out there, so it's not for that. It's not for so coffee. I hope not. I hope you came for fellowship and love and to be lifted up and to hear good news and be told that Jesus Christ is the Lord of all. That today, right now, this moment, he is at the right hand of the Father, ruling on high. I told Lacey about a song that I've been hearing lately when I'm praying, and it's, it's actually an older song, I didn't know it. Uh, but it starts off, it says, you dance over me. You dance over me. And it's about how Jesus is moving all around us. And we don't hear the sound, but he's protecting me and loving me and he's praying for me and he's continually reminding me of this, take heart, I have overcome the world. I want to leave you with this this morning. That if you haven't found Jesus Christ, if you haven't moved to a connection with him, if you haven't had a change in your life that's so powerful that all you know to do is give glory to him, that when we stand up here and praise, that all you can do is just lift your hands and say, glory to you, Lord God Almighty. If you haven't experienced that in your life, you, you'll have an opportunity this morning. Let me tell you, those that were at beautiful feet with us last time, that was powerful worship, right? Powerful worship. And, and here in a minute, Ricky's going to come up and sing a song that has powerful, powerful message. And I implore you, if you haven't made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, to come down and do that this morning. I also would like to in, in, employ those that, that have received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Maybe your glory is not going to Him every day. Maybe you walk out of here every Sunday morning and you say, I tithe today. I hope I, I have a better week now. Or I, I served in the children's church today. God, I deserve something for that. Because that's, that's not the right glory. That's glory upon yourself. If you're not walking out of here saying, I want to give you glory in every way, then you have an opportunity to today to come and lay that down here and say, God, I want to just glorify you and worship you. I want to have a worship presence in here where I can't stand but raise my hands and do what Jesus did. Look up to the Father and praise him.